Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of EO Fire, and welcome to Master Leadership. Great leaders ask great questions, and this podcast takes you on a journey to master leadership with questions that matter to leaders who matter with your host, Lily Sinabria. Hi, this is Lily, and welcome to Master Leadership, where we connect with leaders worldwide to gain insights on important topics to help us on our journey towards greater significance. If you would like to participate as a guest, or if you have a question that you would like to ask a guest, go to masterleadership.org for more information. Anne Brown is an experienced market research professional and serial entrepreneur. As founding partner in Gazelle Global Research, she leads a global team with international data collection, data processing, and total fieldwork management. She knows market research in multiple time zones, continents, and languages. Anne Brown is a PRC certified member of the Insights Association and a longtime member of SOMAR, WIRE, WBENC, and WBE. Welcome, Anne Brown. How are you? Doing very well, thank you. And I wanted to just start out by saying thank you so much, Lily, for inviting me to do this and um, to share in a conversation with you. Thank you so much for coming on and, and pouring into our listeners. Are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. All right. And so tell us a bit about your path to leadership and what you're doing now. I'm the CEO of Gazelle Global. You might see some of my old marketing things behind me. Actually, it's a very exciting time for Gazelle because we're celebrating our 30th year. So Gazelle is a market research operations company. So we do everything except design and analysis. Our clients are research firms mostly, and we support their back office operations. And our mantra is to make their lives easier. And we do it worldwide. That's a part that's very exciting to me. The fact that we're a global business and um, we get to be involved with respondents and companies worldwide. So Uh, Anne, Gazelle Global... That's an interesting name. Did you come up with this? I did not. I am a founder, but there were five of us in the beginning. And one of our founders loved the name because he said that in the morning in Africa, you know, you either run to save yourself or you get eaten. So like a gazelle, we are constantly on the move and we're constantly moving forward. Here's the quote. Every morning in Africa, a gazelle wakes up. It knows it must outrun the fastest lion or it will be killed. Every morning in Africa, a lion wakes up. It knows it must run faster than the slowest gazelle or it will starve. It doesn't matter whether you're a lion or a gazelle. When the sun comes up, you better be running. Mm, That's what you guys do. You're fast, you're on target, and you survive this. Yeah, that's how we got named. Oh, love that. I love to find origins of names because they're so interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I I started my leadership path at Yankelovich, Skelly & White, a market research firm from many, many years ago, sort of cut my teeth there. And um, I ran one of their departments and uh, it just went on from there. Um, I was very lucky. About 30 years ago, I was invited to join in the founding of Gazelle and uh, just went from there. When we came on, I commented on the bookshelves. We both have bookshelves. Mine is a little small, a lot smaller than yours, but you do research, market research, which is super important and powerful, especially as leaders, because we get informed, right? Information is super important. It is. It is. And it's very exciting to uh, work hand in hand with our customers, um, delivering them high quality data so that they can put you know, their insights into the results and, you know, present those to brands and all kinds of companies. It might be a pharma company. It might be um, a government body. It might be a religious group. It might be an arts company. It might be some pro bono work. So it really runs the gamut. And, uh, you know, I think that's one of the things that keeps us interested in that it's always different. Wow. And you've been around for 30 years, so you've seen a lot of shit. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, we have. Well, we have seen a lot. Yeah, a lot of ups and downturns in the world, you know, the, the financial world as well. We were in Manhattan um, on 9 11. We had just uh, moved into that office not too much before that. And it was a devastating time. And then, you know, we had 2008, 
you know, there have been some rocky times. But... 2020, which flipped all of us, right? It did, um, yes. So we became totally virtual because of that. But I think that it offers our employees um, a way to work more efficiently. There's a sense of trust. And I think that the team is very responsive to the fact that they can be at home, do what it takes to, you know, maybe pick up their children at the bus stop and pick up their work when they get back. So I'm really happy with the environment and the way it's working. Tell us a little bit about this, because I know a lot of entrepreneurs and leaders who, when you talk about marketing and all that stuff, they kind of pull back. It's like, oh, because it seems like so um, complicated, right? But tell us a little bit more about what you do and how we can connect with you, because this is super important. We don't do the design and we don't do the analysis, but we do everything in between. So what happens usually is that um, we'll start at the beginning of a, a project, so to speak, at, at the bidding stage. So a research company will usually come to us with an idea, a brand perhaps reached out to them or a pharma company reached out to them and they want to do some work. They want to get some information regarding a new drug or a disease or caregivers And um, they'll reach out to a research firm who will then put together an idea of how they can respond to that request. And then they'll send it to us and they'll ask us to come up with a plan of how we'll interview people, the types of people we'll interview, and we go from there. Right. And so how can people find more information on you? Oh, our website, gazelleglobal.com. And so when they go there, what will they find? What are some services that they can do? They'll find um, our data collection offerings, our sample offerings, our data processing offerings, our programming offerings. Because we're global, we translate into about 100 languages and we code into about 20. And, you know, when people answer questions in, let's say, Italy or Spain or France, they're going to be most comfortable answering the questions in their native language. So we take those and we code them using people who are bilingual. And so who are your ideal clients? Oh, my ideal clients are market research firms. I'd say 95% of our business is with full service market research firms or sample companies who will be doing some research that they don't handle internally. Love it. And there's a wealth of information with you. Um, I'm so so excited to continue to dig in. So, and as a lifelong learner, what are you learning right now? I'm actually learning to be a CEO um, completely doing my own thing. Um, I had a, a longtime partner who retired a couple of years ago and we ran the business together. So part of my learning is to manage a business uh, solo and I'm learning and loving it. It's a wonderful path for me, but on the personal side, trying to learn to speak Italian, which <laughs> I'm not doing very well. I, I've taken several initial courses, but you know, the pandemic got in the way and it's on my bucket list. I definitely um, want to pick it up again and get further into it. And so being curious to me is one of the tenets of great leadership. You seem like a very curious person. So tell Uh us a little bit about why that's important. I consider myself to be a wanderlust. You know, I love traveling. You know, the whole part of the business that's global is what inspires me. I love to learn about other peoples and other cultures. I love to go there. I love to see just the world around me. I love to walk around the streets of Verona, or I love to walk into an old ruin in Sicily. I love Scotland. I feel very well-traveled and very lucky that I've been able to see such wonderful places. And some of them, actually, I've seen because of work. I'm a member of something called SOMAR. And every year there's a conference somewhere, oftentimes in the EU, but a couple of times here in North America as well. And I often attend. And so I've been to some wonderful places because of SMR and also traveling for business. So, so in your wanderlust, you mentioned a lot of Italian cities. I'm no yes. wonder learning Italian. Are you planning to move there anytime soon? <laughs> No, I'm not planning to move there anytime soon. My husband would like to, but no. And I ask because I do have a a really great friend and actually a mentor who's doing that. He's learning Italian because he wants to live in Italy for half a year. How wonderful is that? So we have a question from a former guest. Peter Anderton wants to know, what's the biggest mistake you've ever made as a leader? And what did you learn from it? That's a good one. I think... My biggest mistake as a leader, and I don't think I've learned my lesson, 
very well, really. And that is that, unfortunately, in business, there is often a time when you have to make a hard decision about an employee. And in my case, I've usually known for several months, maybe longer, that this situation is not going to work out. It's not a good fit. And yet I fall into the trap of being hopeful, like some little thing will happen and I'll say, oh, see, it's going to work out. I know that hope is not a strategy. I know that very well, but I fall into the trap all the time and I've fallen into it recently and I've been annoyed with myself over it. So I'm going to work very hard at conquering this whenever I feel that I should be making this decision again. But yeah, that's the one. You're not the only one. There are many people that fall into that trap because you know, your heart is big. You have a big heart. <laughs> you care about yeah. people. And that's wonderful. Yeah. But then, you know, you have this entity that you have to take care of, right? You have this, this corporation, you have this organization that has to be sustained in a viable way by leaders. So I can see how that happens. So what is something different that you're going to do? Because we know about, right, doing the same thing all the time. And um, is there oh, yeah. something different that you're going to do or you're planning on doing or thinking about? Yes, I'm planning on putting something in my calendar in, let's say, six months and make an evaluation because I'm talking to someone about replacing the person that has recently left. And I'm going to put a, a note in my calendar so that it pops up on my screen and, you know, okay, where are we? Have that conversation because the fact of the matter is, I'm not doing them a good service either, nor am I doing the staff a good service by this. I think that's my biggest mistake, and that's what I'm planning to do about it. What I heard was that you're speaking to someone, so it's almost like coaching, right? Getting some coaching from someone on the outside. That's a great strategy because they see things you don't see. And also planning to make things happen, right? Taking action, putting yes. it in your calendar so that it can happen. Yeah. I love those strategies. Keep us posted on your growth. <laughs> okay. We're, all, we're all growing in different areas. And so this is important. You're not the only one that struggles with this, but always keeping in mind that it's sometimes our sentimentality can get in the way of growth. When you like the person. Yeah. That's but the other part of it. This is a nice person. You know, there you are like, now, how can I be in this place again? This is another nice person. And here we are. And you said it well. You said that it does them a disservice as well. When they're in a space where they're not growing, they're not really functioning at their highest level. And they can do better elsewhere. That's right. So, Anne, when you think of leadership today, what most concerns you? And what are you most hopeful about? I'm actually most hopeful about the youth today. But that's where my hope lies. You know, we've had our chance and we've messed up several areas that were <laughs> in our control. We really have. You know, we have a planet that's getting too hot and I can just go on and on and on. But I'm very hopeful about the youth today because they seem to get it. You know, I think they have a good understanding of climate change and I think they get it. So I have a lot of hope there. I also have some hope um, in AI and a fear of AI in the same breath. You know, I'm hopeful for the industry that I work in. I love the industry. It's been very good to me. I'm hopeful for its continuance. And I think AI will play a part in that. So I think it's going to be a very interesting time ahead. Just imagining how AI will affect the industry that I'm in. I think there will be a lot of areas that it will come to play. So, and the, you know, the financial mood of the country right now is not great. Prices are high. People are suffering. And I think businesses are a little on edge. Brands are a little on edge um, in terms of spending money because it has been a rough couple of years. So that's kind of where my head's at. You know, I'm with you with the younger generation and we have had our chance, but it doesn't mean that we can't play in this game with them. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> I believe that we need each other. So you mentioned AI and it's something that I continue to think about, right? And I'm with you in that there's a, an excitement and there's also a, a caution, right? Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time. And I wonder what leadership will look like then, right? Because we've shifted. This is like leadership 2.0, right? Yeah. <laughs> Traditional leadership. And now this is leadership 2.0, which is all about, and it's always been this. 
it's all about social emotional development because as you lead yourself you can lead others well right great leaders i'm talking about mm -hmm. um, when you think of leadership 3.0 what, what does that look like for you i don't know what it looks like but i know that there will be challenges in the industry that i'm in because there's a lot of report writing and questionnaire development and is going to be impacted by ai you know i think that the interesting thing is that while AI can do so much, the inspiration is still going to come from humanity. How that all happens and how it all gets mixed together, I think is going to be very interesting in the next iteration of leadership. I think it's going to be crazy for certain institutions like Harvard or any college. How are they going to manage this when someone you know, can just ask to have a paper written and... 10 minutes later, there's the draft. And then maybe you do a little bit of cleaning up and there's your paper. How is our world going to embrace this? I wonder, uh, plagiarism has been a thing, but now is it? And what does exactly. that look like? how do we shift to that? What do we do when someone presents this? How will people learn though? You know? uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> we will figure that out. Education has gone through such a shift where prior to the internet, the teacher was the source of all knowledge. And then we had to shift that to create learners who love to learn, create curious learners. And that's always been a part of it, but it has shifted. Now with AI, what does that look like? I don't know. <laughs> it would be great to have conversations about leadership 3.0. Our business is a relationship business. Yes. So I'm very, very well aware of how important relationships are. But you know, you said something that really hit me. I'm taking a sharp turn here. We were talking about books earlier and you just said something to me that hit me as, huh, interesting. We're having this issue now across the country where certain books are being called taboo and maybe AI is gonna solve that problem because maybe access to the wealth of information that's out there is going to override this book banning that's been going on. I don't know. The books anymore. Can't burn the books anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true, so right? It will, it will certainly solve some problems and it, it will also create some other challenges, which, yes. you know, humans, as humans, we can rise to. Um, and it'll take leaders who are forward thinkers, who are future thinkers, who are global thinkers, quantum leadership, where we operate in a different way, but connection is key relationship is key. You know, I also have a concern about, you know, all of this AI because there are inherent biases that are planted in all of this by the people who develop them. So it's not a perfect world. There's still room for right, the humans. And then there are engineers who will pick that up and fix it. Yes. Wonderful. All right. So as a listener of this podcast, Anne, what's a question that you would like a future leadership guest to respond to? Like, what are you curious about? I guess I'm most curious about how the leaders of today maintain the relationship with the members of their team in this day and age of people working from home, people working all over the place, you know, people moving because they can work remotely because it's a relationship business and it's a relationship world, really everything happens in terms of relationships. What are the better suggestions for how leaders manage that in their organizations? I think I'd like to hear more about that. A great question. And we've addressed some of that, but I will certainly pose it to upcoming leaders. Now, is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners? I guess I'd like to share that I just feel very privileged at the time that I've been granted in this wonderful industry that I'm in, and I'm very grateful. You know, I'm grateful for the relationships, the clients. I'm very grateful for my team. I have a wonderful team. And they're very supportive. I place a lot of trust in them, just like the trust that clients place in us. And I just feel grateful. Well, we're grateful for you. Now, I do have a question that came up as you were saying this. Young leaders, up and coming leaders who are looking to do some of what you do. What's some wisdom that you can impart on them? I belong to an organization called WIRE, Women in Research. And in our industry, it is a wonderful place for young women who want to move forward. I think it started 15 or 16 years ago. 
And I know we're like maybe 15,000 strong worldwide, something like that. And it's free to join. It provides mentorship opportunities. There are some classes, accelerant classes for uh, means for women to grow their business acumen. There are mentorship opportunities for leaders. There are office hours where you can call into a leader and talk to that person about their experiences, ask them questions that you know you might be struggling with in your own firm or in your own position. Um, so that's one of the things that I would suggest. If you're in the market research or marketing industry, join WIRE. It's just been a wonderful place for me. There are similar organizations. This isn't the only one. It just happens to be the one that I'm a part of. But there are so many other organizations like that where people want to help. You know, that's the thing. People want to give back. It's a very important part of being in a leadership position is giving back. And I'm sure there are organizations for men as well. And we welcome men to WIRE events because you can't have an event, you know, without them. They're a part of who we are, the human landscape. So... So why are it? It stands for womeninresearch.org. There are blogs, um, there are newsletters, and packed full of helpful information. I would suggest anybody who's interested in um, our industry or just to read some of the information held there. Love it. Well, Anne, thank you so much for pouring into us, into me, into our listeners. It's been a great conversation. Thank you for inviting me. I really enjoyed meeting you. I think you're doing wonderful. Thank you for making me a part of it. In closing, here's a quick message. Coaching is the art of influence that underpins leadership in the 21st century. It is the very thing that can get you from being stuck to being extraordinary. So go to masterleadership.org and sign up to get a free coaching session. Until next time, continue to ignite that leader in you.